Good morning, everyone. How are you doing this morning? It's Makeda Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And in case you're unfamiliar with me, I have a, a background, a Bachelor's of Science in um, Exercise and Sports Science and Nutrition Science. Started off first in biotechnology. Um, and then um, just completed a Master's of Science in Medical Cannabis Science and Therapeutics from the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. And I have committed my life to studying all the ways that we could take our body to its highest level. Um, I am just, you know, always reading research. This page, The Body Scientist, this page is really about trying to educate laymen, regular people, um, translating the science because most people, most practitioners don't read scientific research. Most doctors, nurses, you know, they go to get their license. Most of them are not reading scientific research um, on a regular basis. And a lot of people who read science, a lot of people who do research don't work with people. So a lot of times there's a disconnect between research and practitioners, right? So a lot of what I aim to do on this page is to um, connect that, right? So I just want to talk about um, science has been in my mind a lot in scientific research lately with Donald Trump um, and all the, the different cuts and stuff that he's doing to scientific research. So I want to have a conversation about that um, because, you know, I myself have pondered, you know, going to get a PhD. That's something that I've pondered. I'm like, you know, you have to be really smart about doing that if someone decides to get a doctorate. You have to, you know, what you're deciding to get it in. Any type of, of, of research, even um, any type of research needs to be funded, right? So in science, it's like you might want to research certain things, but can you get funding for it? And I've debated if I even wanted to go that route because when you are um, having to get money for research, it's a constant hustle. It's a constant hustle of trying to get more grants to fund this research and um, it can be a little bit stressful, right? Unless you just happen to go, like a lot of times people who get the easiest funding, they um, may be scientists for industry. And when you're getting funding, a lot of times there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of scientific research is heavily tainted because of funding issues. Like when you, if scientists usually have to do research that supports the mission of their funders, right? So Coca-Cola doesn't want to fund research that says that, you know, some of these ingredients are terrible, you know? So you have an issue with even trying to get like independent funding and this is where you have the NIH that comes in because the NIH is not tied to industry. Um, but with, with, with Trump saying, you know, they're going through, Doge knows people going through, and any research that they see that they deem DEI, which means that in the funding proposals, right, um, research proposals, if you're using women or barriers or, you know, different, you know, ethnic groups, because like when you're doing research, sometimes you need to do research in a certain population. You might want to do research in an Asian population in LA. You might want to do research on, um, you know, like black Americans are a different demographic or, you know, um, people that live in, I don't know, it's, you have different demographics. Most scientific research is done on white men, okay? So already we have an issue with scientific research where with, with medical research, sports science, most of it is done on white men, okay? Not just men, but mostly white men. So white men don't represent women. They don't represent black women. They don't represent even black men necessarily, you know what I'm saying? Or Asian men. So it's important, like sometimes, you know, there's, there are gender differences and sometimes there are different racial differences with certain diseases and things that need to be studied, okay? So, and then as a graduate student, if somebody decides that they want to um, be, get a PhD, okay, you have to secure funding for that, okay? You have to, it's not like, it's not like undergrad where you're like, okay, I want to be a biology major or a history major. You just find a school that has a program that you like that, you know, whatever you can afford or whatever. 
when you're getting a doctorate, you have to have, you have to find um, scientists that are doing research that will mentor you and that have the funding to bring you into their lab. Um, and so there's a lot of work that goes in before you even apply for a doctorate program. There's a lot of work that goes in of doing research and, you know, um, doing research on certain advisors that you might want to have at certain universities and communicating with them and to see even if they have the funding for you. So with these cuts, even Trump cut $400 million from Columbia University because of the Palestine protests last year. That um, really affects graduate students. There are people who have, you know, might have gotten in about to start a PhD and now, well, maybe they're in a program and they can't finish because of cuts. Um, so there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of research to me that I think is kind of pointless, you know, um, and there's research I think that is really unnecessary, and there's also a lot of research that is very necessary that's not getting done. Even when we talk about cannabis, right? There's a lot of um, there's a lot of cannabis research that needs to be done, and so many different things. And so, what if somebody wanted to research cannabis and and women's health issues? You know, like could that get funded? You know. So there's really important things, especially when it's, it's dealing with people who are not white men. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be researched. And so you have, you know, so I've been thinking about it a lot. And then um, I just realized that there was a march last Friday called Stand Up for Science that happened in D.C., Boston, Denver, San Francisco, um, and said some other cities where there were scientists who were, um, you know, speaking up. Now, in the Trump era, I don't, I really don't know what protesting will do. I don't think that he really cares about that. Um, there are people who have been, good morning, Daryl. There are people who've been fighting Trump in legally and winning against some of his blocks and stuff like that, but. It's really because like, okay, so two, two examples. Um, Trump kept saying that he had cut funding for researching transgender mice, right? And I thought, yeah, that is ridiculous. We shouldn't be researching transgender mice, right? So, but then come to find out that this research was not about transgender mice. It was about transgenic mice, okay? Which is not at all transgender, okay? And then um, there was, I saw a video where a woman was talking about a neuroscience conference that happened in Florida with a bunch of scientists who were researching um, hearing. And apparently hearing loss is becoming worse in younger people. A good friend of mine has a friend who this girl's like 23 and she wears a hearing aid. Um, and so I recently discovered that young people are having more and more hearing issues, okay, which is crazy to me that you have somebody who's under 25 with a hearing aid. So there's a lot of hearing issues, right? And I think a lot of that is linked to vitamin A deficiency, okay? Because if a mother doesn't have enough vitamin A at the time of conception and when the baby is developing in the very first few weeks, certain things don't develop properly, okay? Um, and hearing is one of those things. It can also be, you know, vitamin A is super important. And people are not consuming vitamin A rich foods, but also um, vitamin A when you're growing and developing too, right? But regardless of that, um, they were doing, there were scientists who were doing research on the diversity of, there's some type of cells, um, I, I, can't, I can't get the right words right now. Ocular is for the eyes. I forget the word, I can't think of the word right now for the ears. But just different, there are different cells in the ears that fire, okay? They have to do with hearing, that fire in different, you know, synchronicities. So there was, they were doing research on the diversity of the firing of these cells in, our, in the ear, okay? And how that affects hearing issues. And at this conference, there were scientists who were finding out that their funding was getting cut. Money that was already approved for them to do research, money that was already approved for graduate students, 
and they're crying all over the hotel because it's getting cut because they had the word diversity in it. When it didn't even have to do with diversity of people, it wasn't talking about black people or Hispanics or Asians or, or women. It was talking about the diversity of the cells in the ear and um, the diversity of how they fire, the, the, the firing patterns. So that's really dangerous, you know what I'm saying? But then I heard a scientist speaking about the research that they're doing at the um, the NIH, right? I mean, not the NIH, sorry, in Mozambique, um, around tr um, circumcision. And they're like, we're doing research in Mozambique about circumcision and how it's prevented HIV by this much, and we're say, you know, we're preventing. It. To me, that kind of research is ridiculous. Okay, I've done videos in the past about circumcision. I don't. To me, that's genital mutilation. Um, I think it's ridiculous to say that you need to cut off the skin on your penis in order to prevent a disease. That's like saying I should shave my head to prevent getting lice. No, how about you just wash your hair and keep clean and put things, you know what I'm saying? Take care of yourself, <laughs> just wash. But do you need to, it just makes no sense. Like somebody could say hair holds dirt. Yeah, that's why you wash your hair. My solution for hair holding dirt is not gonna be to shave my head bald. Foreskin plays a role, okay? It plays a role in men, in the, the nerves, the male pleasure. Now, if a man has a circumcision, he wouldn't know that because he wouldn't listen to compare it to. But there's a lot of nerves and things there, okay? And then it also affects the woman sexually. It has a purpose. Every part of our body has a purpose. Like, there's nothing that we need to be, you come, you come right out the womb and you need to start chopping off pieces of your body. That's ridiculous, okay? That comes from religion. And I think that, and it's like, why are Americans spending money researching some that in Mozambique anyway. Like it's just that to me, stuff like that, I do think is wasteful point this research. So there's stuff like that, yes. There's things that people research. It's like, do we really need to research this? You know, but there's a lot of things that definitely there needs to be more research. We already see how many black women die in childbirth. And, and I have my reasons and things that I think about that. But still, you can say there needs to be more research about that. You know, but people can't even write that in a proposal, okay? If you're, if you're trying to get a grant proposal for research and you're writing something about women or black people or Asians or, you know, or diversity, <laughs> anything like that, it's like, nope, no funding for you. So this is a serious issue because you always hear, like in the black community, for example, black people are always talking about health disparities. And a lot of that, to me, I feel like a lot of the reasons why black people suffer from hypertension more and diabetes more, and asthma more. A lot of that is because of low vitamin D levels, okay? Vitamin D is super important for those things. And most people are vitamin D deficient, and especially most melanated people, whether you live in a hot place or not, okay? Because even people who live in the Caribbean and Africa and South America and Central America, most of them have on too much clothes, okay? If your legs are covered up and your arms are covered up, um, and you're not in the sun all day doing agricultural work. You might be in the office in your car. You're not getting, you know, um, sun on your skin like that. I mean, you know, sun on your skin like that to get vitamin D. And then um, if you're not eating vitamin D rich foods, which are liver, um, liver, you know, a lot of egg yolks, fish eggs, pork fat. Those are the best sources, especially, you know, um, especially liver. And anywhere in the world, okay. I don't care where people are from in the world. If you're a certain age, you ate liver growing up. Liver, so a lot of people aren't eating those foods. They're not eating organ meats. So now you're going to have more vitamin D deficiencies and vitamin A, okay, which RFK Jr. was speaking about um, for measles, and I'll do a video about that. But vitamin A definitely does help with um, killing the measles virus and making it less... Um, less lethal and damaging okay so there's a lot of scientific research and truth to that okay because yes yeah, so i'm gonna i'll do a video about that but um i think it's a lot of nutritional reasons but still that's my theory that all that stuff also needs to be tested and researched so you know there's so many ways that it can impact all of us by having you know certain important cuts in scientific research you know 
So I just wanted to make a video about that. Um, I, I find that the Stand Up For Science movement is interesting and it just really was had me thinking because I'm like, damn, you know how upset I would be if I did the work to get into a PhD program only to, and, and I have the funding and everything, only to be completely denied because there are funding cuts. Do you know how mad I would be if I was a scientist who did a whole bunch of work to get funding for this research. There's, there's scientists who are in the middle of clinical trials about things that have to do with neuroscience, children's health, um, the elderly, you know, different women's health. And so you have all these um, scientists who they're in the middle of clinical trials and they don't know if they can finish because of funding, funding being cut. So th these are issues. And I'm not somebody who's a fan of Western medicine and I'm not a fan of, you know, emergency medicine is one thing, but I'm not a pharmaceutical person hence my degree in medical cannabis science. I, um, you know, I'm not really into, you know, how medicine tries to alter things when they do, but there's so, there's certain scientific research I feel like is doing too much or not really necessary, but then there's a lot of other scientific research that's super important. I'm the kind of, you have scientists that like to manipulate nature, okay? They're like, how can we manipulate this? Like, how can, like, like, <laughs> like how can we take, um, you know, these genes from this fish and put it in this tomato. How can we, you know, just do whatever people do when they want to twerk nature, right? But then there's scientists, or even with cannabis, you have scientists that want to make fake cannabinoids instead of just using the cannabinoids that naturally occur in the cannabis plant. You have people making derivatives, and, you know, those derivatives always have issues. Um, you know, you have people that make vitamin supplements. They're making fake vitamins. They're, they're putting calcium in orange juice. Calcium doesn't go in orange juice, okay? Calcium does not naturally occur in orange juice. That's the food industry adding calcium into orange juice. Calcium needs a lot of saturated fat to be absorbed. It works with vitamin D and vitamin A. Where do we find that? In dairy. You know? Um, so the thing, in the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, we have scientists that seek to understand nature and scientists that seek to change it. I'm the one that seeks to understand it. I respect nature. I respect the wisdom in nature. And Western science for me only confirms certain things that indigenous scientists have known for generations, right? So there's a lot of scientific research I'm not particularly a fan of, but still, you know, things are interconnected. Everything is interconnected. And so just think about whatever research you might think might be important about your group of people you know, um, people that, that you might care about. If you've had a child or a mom or a sibling or yourself that's had different illnesses and more research needed to be done, you know, think about how that could affect you with having those blocks, you know? So I just wanted to talk about that, you know, pay attention to the Stand Up For Science movement. I will talk more about it soon and I'm gonna do a video for on the measles as well, okay? Um, until I see you guys again, have a great day. Thank you for listening. Make sure you follow me on YouTube at the Body Scientist 81 If you're on YouTube, make sure you follow me on Instagram at the underscore body underscore scientist. Make sure you follow me in both places because I don't always post the same thing in both places. And I'm also always available for um, evaluations, okay? I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, nutrition consultations, medical cannabis science, medical cannabis consultations and fitness, okay? So feel free to hit me up at thebodyscientist81 at gmail.com and I will see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.